Hello all of you lovely people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and today I want to talk to you about anger. It is not a pleasant emotion under any circumstances. It's exhausting, blinding and has even led great people to do very horrible things. And yet, as a society, we are uncontrollably attracted to it. Anger forms the backbones of so many of our favourite films, with revenge being a driving and, for the audience, commendable factor. It's led to some of the most brutally honest moments of music, and it's driven thousands to galleries to witness anger manifested as art. And of course, it's deeply embedded into our video games. Death and destruction are power fantasies that developers are only too willing to offer us. But as you might expect, with such a volatile emotion, there are some times where things were taken too far, and thanks to either backlash, outcry, or sheer spitefulness has ended up marring an industry that we're trying to be proud of. So let's set our blood to fizzy as we're about to rage and run through the absolute pits of gaming hell once more, because this time we're talking about anger. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are the seven times the gaming industry gave in to anger. Number 7. Konami and Hideo Kojima Split Often, you can only truly determine the strength of a relationship when it's actually tested, and for a while it seemed like Konami and Kojima would forever go hand in hand frolicking along the sand calling each other Princess Beach. However, when push came to shove in 2015, the world got to see how petty the publisher could be. Now, I understand that Hideo Kojima, while seemingly being the most affable man in the world when you consider just how many celebrities wanted to be part of Death Stranding, might not be the easiest person to work with. I say this because his visions for titles are usually intricate and complex, requiring huge development time and budgets. And it seemed that Konami was simply not prepared to wait nor shell out the required cash. The split seemed to be one straight out of high school, with Konami publicly deleting Kojima from their Facebook and by that I mean removing his entire existence from the Metal Gear franchise, cancelling Silent Hills and even going so far as to deny him access to the Game Awards in 2015, to accept, by the way, an award that he'd won. It was petty on the smallest levels and driven by an anger that was so childish that it was incredibly unbecoming for the publishing giant. Kojima, though, it seemed, would have the last laugh, with the fan base obliterating Metal Gear Survive, lambasting the company all the way throughout this, and utilizing all of this heat to generate PR for what would become Death Stranding. Number 6. EA Helps Define Microtransactions as Gambling Across the majority of 2019, the world of microtransactions was turned on its head when people seemed to finally notice a lot of similarities between how this practice was implemented in some video games and gambling. Now, gambling, as we are told by nearly every governing body, is something that only adults should engage in, and only under strict guidelines. Yet, in the wild west of the video game industry, it seemed that anyone could set up a game and begin using loot boxes to encourage impulsive spending. For years, this practice had just been flying under the radar, but with EA's absolute clangor that was Star Wars Battlefront 2 provoking outrage from the community, the wider media was quick to take notice. The fans had pointed out that Battlefront 2 had become a pay-to-win experience, where loot boxes were rewarding players who pumped in enough cash with game-breaking abilities and skills. Quick to backpedal, EA ushered in statements of apology and removed the loot boxes from the game, but the fans didn't stop. They were sick of being treated like guinea pigs by companies like EA looking to milk some more cash out of them, and carried on pursuing the developer. As a result, the argument reached a wider forum and entire countries began to look into classifying loot boxes as gambling accessible by miners. It was not a good look, but thanks to the anger of the community, a reshaping of the industry itself was set in motion. Where it ends and in what form, however, is still to be decided. Number 5. Phil Fish Quits the Industry now, one kind of has to feel sorry for poor old Phil Fish. I mean, the man is incredibly passionate about video games, especially his own work, and when you see how much it took to get Fez to market and how it almost killed him in the wonderfully produced indie game The Movie, well, it's quite breathtaking. That being said, his temper is always highlighted as a factor throughout that project, and it's one that overspilled so greatly that it led to him not only ceasing development on Fez 2 altogether, but saw him leave the industry entirely. Now, to be clear, 
It wasn't an outburst without provocation. GT's Marcus Beer called Fish a hipster asshole when it came to refusing to comment on a situation that was ongoing with Microsoft at the time. Now, Fish took to Twitter to voice that he was leaving the industry not thanks to Beer personally, but abuse like this, which in fairness is actually a legitimate response. Why should you place yourself in the public eye only to be derided by somebody you don't know or owe anything to? However, the reaction to up and quit the industry and take an award-winning franchise home with him does sting especially, because it feels like he was blaming everyone in spite of the massive support that he was shown by fans of his work. Number 4. Mass Effect Sex Scenes if you know anything about the Mass Effect series, you'll understand it to be an epic, trawling sci-fi odyssey that puts players front and center in the middle of a galactic war, where every choice that they make impacts their journey and where the trust and bond of your crew could mean life or death at every turn. However, if you don't know anything about the Mass Effect series, then you may well be Fox News, who used the release of the original game as another excuse to tune up that tired dad rock band known as Video Games Are Corrupting the Children. It's not a stretch to say that Fox News thrives on controversy and unbridled, often outspoken anger. It's unfortunately not alone in this category, but it's easily one of the most prolific. And so when it came to Mass Effect, and specifically its romance options, they had an absolute field day. Claiming that the game had intense sexual moments too shocking for TV, reporters brought in countless, air quotes, experts to help chastise a franchise that none of them had played. Imagine having the gall to sit on live television and spout off your opinions like they were fact, and then admit to having never played or seen the game. Cooper, have you ever played Mass Effect? <laughs> no. That's like me saying that I don't agree with the ending of The Lord of the Rings because my mate Steve told me that Frodo uses an AK to shoot Sauron in the eye. Somehow it seemed to me to not really fit with the rest of the fantasy-themed narrative, right? You know what, in fact, I think that they should change the ending. What do you mean that that's not how it ends? Well, I'm on TV, so I'm therefore right. Number 3. Kane and Lynch Destroy GameSpot the relationship between video game review outlets and publishers is a murky one sometimes. It's a symbiotic affair in which games need good press in order to get out into the public eye, and outlets thrive on fan bases clicking on their coverage. However, it's a relationship that can and has become increasingly corrupt, with media outlets taking payouts for positive exposure, which changes the dynamic entirely. Now, it's no longer about one party assessing the others objectively, but about appeasing the person holding the checkbook. And no clearer was this exposed them when an unfavorable review of Kane and Lynch from GameSpot came to light in 2007. Now, Jeff Gerstmann, who later went on to found the almighty Giant Bomb, was the reviewer in question, and he gave the game a 6 out of 10, a rather too positive score in my eyes considering the bland gruel with spit on that was this title, but to IO Interactive, this was not what GameSpot had been paid to do. They wanted a more positive review and they had not received it, so the outlet was pressured by outside forces to let Jeff go. What a horrible display of anger and power over the relationship between publisher and reviewer. It was quickly snapped up by the media, and ever since, there's been a very unsure dialogue going on between these two groups. IO Interactive's anger was on display, and the rallying support behind Gerstmann's new project showed that it wasn't something that the public was happy with. Number 2. Real Life Stabbing Thanks to Counter-Strike it's never nice to detail a moment of real-life violence that comes courtesy of video games, especially seeing as this undermines any progress that we try to make convincing others that they deserve to be treated as an art form. Sadly, this story really does warrant exploring for how horrible it was. Think of it as a smelling salt, which shows us the importance of internet security and of a wider argument of mental health support, which definitely seems to be lacking here. In 2010, Julien Barrow approached the front door of another Counter-Strike player known only as Mikhail who he had tracked down over several months of stalking, only to stab him repeatedly as he answered the door. The reason? Well, Mikhail had killed him on Counter-Strike after a knife duel on the game. Yes, really. Julian was sentenced to two years' imprisonment for the crime, which is actually pretty lenient, all things considered. There's a common tendency to get angry at losses in video games, but this was something different. This was a blurring of reality and fantasy, which was disturbing on every level. And number 1. Apple vs Epic Games 
While the Apple vs Epic Games lawsuit only kicked off in August of this year, the bitter and quite snide actions of both parties have already had far-reaching consequences. And while at its heart it's a tale of gaming industry greed, the retaliations between the pair have been motivated by anger. It all began with Epic Games trying to cut Apple out of its 30% cut that it receives for microtransactions purchased on its platform, which is, according to sources, the blanket amount that any developer must cough up. Epic Games, clearly not satiated by the million that Fortnite rakes in each and every month wanted to introduce a new marketplace feature that would see them keep all the profit. Apple responded quickly and brutally, axing Fortnite from the Apple Store and effectively telling Apple to play ball or have it burst. This, to any other company, would have been enough to fall back in line. However, Epic Games instead took to social media to decry Apple's greed while also masking their own. The developer used its loyal fan base and a clever propaganda video to make Apple look like the villain of the piece stating that it wanted a monopoly over microtransactions and that this is the time for revolution, freedom, my brothers and sisters, so on and so forth. Apple was unswayed by these attempts and has lashed out in particularly spiteful ways that has seen others not even involved in the argument punished. On the 23rd of August, Apple announced that it would no longer be supporting the Unreal Engine, meaning that devs who used this were now actually locked out of support and tool updates. This is disastrous and it could have led to a security breach that couldn't just be fixed on mobile games, and it was a move done only to weaken Epic Games' support from the community. It's kind of like watching a war unfold where greed is at its core, but anger and contempt are its actions. How it's going to end at the time of recording, well, that's still very uncertain. And there we go, my friends. Those were seven times the gaming industry gave in to anger. I hope that you enjoyed that, my friends, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. If you like what you've heard here, then remember this is part of an ongoing series called The Seven Deadly Gaming Sins here on WhatCulture.com that you can check out in the playlist. I hope you have a fantastic day, whatever you get up to, my friend, and go out there with love in your hearts and definitely not anger, because you will live a healthier and happier life if you do that. If you want to follow me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal gaming channel where I stream every Every single Wednesday and Sunday. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.